Uh, hello and welcome to our presentation, Winning the Neutral Zone Battle, How to Create um, Valuable Zone Entries. Um, our team comprises of myself, Alyssa Longmuir. And my name is Mikhail Nahabedian. Um, and we would also like to acknowledge that the data we're using today comes from staff leads as part of their sequencing data provided as part of this year's uh, Big Data Cup. Uh, so past research has shown that effective transition play can become a sustainable competitive advantage for teams in women's hockey. Uh, to understand how to be efficient on zone entries, we need to understand how teams set themselves up to, for success. And this comes down largely to two categories, the patterns which teams play and the tactics that they utilize. Uh, first, we're gonna look at neutral zone passing patterns. Uh, to look at our neutral zone passing patterns, we first looked at path clustering. Uh, to do so, we used a method called k-means clustering, and we clustered both the initial pass in a play sequence and also all subsequent passes in a play sequence to develop two unique clusters that could then give us a series of events that were very similar to each other in most ways. Um, here we can see an example of those clusterings with uh, there being 17 uh, separate cluster combinations occurring. Uh, our rows are dedicated to being the first or initial pass while our columns are looking at the subsequent passes and are also what we will mainly be analyzing today. Uh, here we can see uh, that our path clusters can then be uh, summarized into these core main routes. We can see here the pink route is very much a going up the wing and then lane changing across the center. Blue is the very similar but on the opposite wing whereas yellow is a little bit more going through the center lane uh, and then maybe swinging towards a wing. And green represents largely our neutral zone recuperation strategies. Here we have pass type A. Um, pass type A, as previously mentioned, uh, represents largely uh, plays that are going up the right wing and then moving across uh, the neutral zone towards the center. These had a 71% chance of being carried, a 14% chance of being dumped, and a 10% chance of being played. And this will become more important uh, throughout the presentation as we look at these strategies more in depth. Uh, path type B, again, very similar, but this time uh, going up the left wing. And this was a 70% chance of being carried, a 19% chance of being dumped, and a 16% chance of being played. Pass type C represents our plays that go more through the middle of the ice, and while still effective, um, are just a little bit less so uh, than the previous two path types, with a 69% chance of being carried, a 15% chance of being dumped, and a 17% chance of being played across the blue line. And lastly, we had path type D, which represented uh, largely our neutral zone recuperations, um, which only had a 51% chance of being carried across the blue line, a 47% chance of getting dumped, and a 4% chance of being played. Um, as we can already see from just this very initial investigation, there's definitely um, some means of moving the puck from the defensive zone to the offensive zone that are more effective than others, with that going up the wings before making a lane change uh, in the neutral zone. Uh, being both one of the more popular routes and also more effective at uh, carrying or playing the puck into the zone. So in terms of neutral zone strategies and neutral zone tactics, the one thing to remember is that neutral zone play, or for the sake of this presentation, we'll call it the enabling factors, can lead to one of three outcomes in terms of zone entries. So it can either lead to controlled entries, which encompass carried and played entries, which Alyssa was talking about earlier, and that has a shot generation index of about 0.6. Dump entries have a shot generation index of 0.24. And then the third option is the fail entries, which have a shot generation index of minus 0.02. These shot generation indices are derived from my previous research with PWHPA data, but the point here is that control entries are more than twice as valuable as dump entries. So in our analysis, we decided to focus our output on the controlled entries to tackle the following question.
What are the tactical factors that influence a team's ability to gain the ozone in a valuable, or as we were saying a few seconds ago, in a controlled way? Based on the big data cup data set, which staff leads made available for all PHF games from last year, we decided to pick and choose five space-time characteristics of neutral zone play that we thought could influence a team's ability to gain the ozone in a successful and valuable way. So these include the quickness of neutral zone sequences, so the time spent in the neutral zone, the average length of passes in a sequence, the number of passes in a sequence, whether there are any lane changes within that sequence, and contextual factors which help us differentiate neutral zone regroup situations where the team is facing a neutral zone forecheck as opposed to more traditional D zone to O zone transition where the opposition is most likely backtracking. Using these characteristics of neutral zone play, we build a statistical model using them as our independent variables. And our goal was to predict the probability of entering the zone with control of the puck. The model that we used was a ridge classifier. And we used the ridge classifier for two main reasons. First, we wanted to have interpretability of our coefficients in order to gather insights on our different characteristics and be able to link them to hockey plays. And second of all, we wanted to bypass some of the multicollinearity that exists between some of the variables in our model and give us more stable coefficients for more precise analysis. So in terms of the results of our model, we noticed that the quickness and lane changes variables positively impacted the ability that teams had to gain the ozone in a successful and valuable manner, while the other variables on the contrary, like number of passes, average length of passes, and the contextual factors, so in this case being in a neutral zone regroup situation, as opposed to a more traditional D zone to O zone rush situation, were negatively impacting teams' ability to gain the ozone in a controlled way. Linking this to hockey terms and linking this to in-game situations, the insights that we were able to gather from these coefficients were the following. So first of all, playing the puck quickly to leverage open time and space through the neutral zone is very important. Also making short, but also more importantly, effective area passes is a good way for teams to avoid interceptions. The third thing is that if you're a team that wants to play off the rush and generate shot attempts off the rush, leveraging D zone to O zone transition plays rather than neutral zone regroups is very important to be able to get these opportunities in a repeatable way. From a more tactical standpoint, the use of lane changes in the neutral, neutral zone is very important. The use of lane changes through the neutral zone can be achieved through different things, but two of the technical elements that can be leveraged to do so are slip passes and crossovers to the neutral zone in order to build linear speed. So now we'll watch two clips that illustrate these elements. We'll let the clip run for the first time. With the time way the schedule we'll had to shift on the fly, it doesn't really matter what you did beforehand. What matters so, is what you're doing now and what you got ahead of you. All those results pretty much thrown out the window. It, it just bit basically seeped. So in this particular play, what's very interesting in the neutral zone sequence is that as soon as number or the Toronto six player retrieves the puck, she retrieves the puck in the middle lane, but uses a couple of crossovers to go down the left flank and initiate a controlled entry in a very valuable way. She then cuts back and tries to rim the puck around to gain ozone possession. It doesn't quite work out in this situation, but it's still a good example of how to initiate 
a controlled entry with lane changes and crossovers to the neutral zone. Then for the next clip, and we'll let this one run as well, and then we'll talk about it. One of three Lang sisters, Lexi, playing for Boston this year. Brianna Lang, a goaltender for the Boston Pride at one point, but Sammy Davis helping raise money for the Travis Roy Foundation. So in this particular situation, what's great about this clip is that right from the get-go of the neutral zone play, the Toronto Six player makes a slip pass, so under the stick of the Boston player, and changes lanes going from the left flank to the right flank. This allows number 67 on Toronto to generate a controlled entry down the right side, and then through good support on the rush, they're able to generate a quality chance off the rush. So going one step further into our modeling process, instead of looking only at controlled entries, we decided to slightly change the output of our model to look at the more valuable type of controlled zone entries. And past research has shown that the most valuable type of controlled entries to generate chances off the rush in women's hockey is middle entries. So in this case, the results of our model are quite similar in the sense that the signs of all the variables and of all the coefficients are approximately the same, or I should say exactly the same in terms of the signs. But in terms of the order of magnitude of these variables and of these coefficients, they're a bit smaller given that there is a smaller probability of initiating middle entries than initiating controlled entries in general. In terms of tactical insights, leveraging speed differentials and deception to create time and space in the middle of the ice is very important to be able to gain the middle of the ice off the entry, but also following the entry to leverage these high danger areas in the ozone. So now let's watch two clips that illustrate these elements. Now Toronto. They come back the other way. There's Bucky, Michaela Grant Menace. So in this particular clip, what Michaela Grant Mentis, who's one of the best players in the NW, the HL does, or the PHF now, sorry, does really well, is to fake a lane change by pulling in the Boston defender to one side and then using deception to come back to the other side, generate a middle entry through the dots and take a medium danger shot off the rush. Then if we go to the next clip. Coach Ugadbo with speed through center, through the purple ice, and over the line with a shot deflected wide by Rosenthal. So another great rush sequence by Toronto, where number 22 retrieves the puck, and as soon as she does retrieve the puck, she keeps her feet in motion to build linear speed and then change lanes to gain the middle of the ice. And the speed differential that she creates to the neutral zone allows her to very easily beat number 91 on Minnesota, which was the player that was trying to stop her through the neutral zone, gain the middle of the ice and use the opposing defender to take a shot and use that defender as a screen to take a medium to high danger shot. So the key takeaway from our presentation if you had to remember one thing from all everything that we talked about is that the recipe for success in the neutral zone for women's hockey is to use quick lane changes to leverage the open time and space that will be created from D zone to O zone transition to generate quality chances off the rush. Thank you very much for taking the time to listen to our presentation. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact us on Twitter and these are our this is our contact information if uh, if you have any questions and want to reach out to us. Thanks for having us and I hope the rest of the conference goes well.